Hi everybody, this is God Sad. Saturday morning. I'm not watching soccer. I'm not wrapping up the two papers that need to be sent out very shortly to a journal. Instead, I'm here talking to you because the tsunami of lunacy continues to crash on the shores of reason. This is a letter that was written in the McGill Daily, which is a a student-run newspaper at one of the leading universities in the world, located in Montreal, where I live. McGill is also one of my two alma maters. I obtained a Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics and Computer Science and an MBA at McGill, so I certainly have a lot of love for my institution. But also, when you love someone, you offer them honest criticism. So what I'd like to do today is share with you a letter that was published on February 18th. And I thank the person who who happens to be a professor at McGill who made me aware of this paper. I shared, or this, this open letter, I shared it yesterday on social media, but I think it's worthwhile that I read it. And as I read it, I will maybe pepper it with some of my own comments. So here we go. So this is called the title of the article. It's a, it's a long uh, letter but it is simply breathtaking. An open letter to white boys in poli-sci, political science. Dear white boys in poli-sci, I wonder what your lives must be like. I also wonder this when I see you clustered in the hallways or standing in the aisles of lecture halls, not realizing how much room you take up. Let me stop right there. Just replace white boys with Muslim boys, with black boys. I wonder how much room you Muslims take up, if she had said that. But you say it to white boys, it's okay. You just stand there, so unapologetic, as the sea of people parts around you. I wonder this when you play devil's advocate in class and you think you're being clever, but you're just shitting on someone else's personhood. I wonder this when you talk over other people or comment on what the professor is saying without raising your hand, as if a lecture is just a dialogue that only the two of you can engage in. I wonder this when you spread yourself out on your desk so that your things spill over onto mine. This is called clutter rape, I guess. You, you clutter the other person so you, you rape them through your clutter. And you don't apologize, but instead continue as if nothing is wrong. Meanwhile, I am too passive to say anything. I wonder this when you exist so loudly and so largely because you've been allowed to exist like this your whole life, and I'm left to carefully defend the scraps of space that I have left. So this is a letter to you for all the times that I wanted to punch you in the mouth and refrain. Here is to you. Sounds like a well-adjusted young woman. Before I get into the nitty-gritty of just how awful it can be to study political science as a woman of color, I mean, it must be awful. I mean, I can't even imagine it. I mean, how could I imagine me, a war refugee who was running away from imminent execution and came to Canada? I could never put myself in your shoes. I mean, how did I study differential equations and analysis of algorithms and discrete mathematics and mathematical logic and uh, artificial intelligence? How did I do all that in a world of white privilege? I would just like to say that this does not apply to all of you in the same ways. Okay, so not all white people. Not all of you are ignorant and oblivious to those around you, and not all of you deserve to be lambasted in this open letter for what you have said or done. Okay, so not not all whites are Nazis. Okay, that's, that's good. But I'm also not sure any of you can safely call yourselves innocent. Even those who don't actively engage in any type of belittling behavior still watch it happen and stand idly by. Even those who consider themselves allies 
continuously speak on behalf of groups whose hardships they have never experienced, thereby effectively robbing marginalized people of the chance to speak for themselves. So if you are white and you're obnoxious, you're bad. If you're white, you're not obnoxious, but you let other whites be obnoxious. Clearly, you're not innocent. If you're white and you don't support the cause of people of color, you're bad. If you're white and you speak up to defend people of color, you're marginalizing their disenfranchised voices. This is a person at a leading university. The term white guy in political science is, of course, a generalization because all sorts of people can be downright awful. No way. No way. I reject that premise. Only white male heterosexuals can be evil. I think this woman hasn't done enough courses in intersectional feminism. However, the white guy represents the apex the apex of privilege. And I do sincerely believe that this and other groups who are so privileged in some respects can be ignorant to the struggles of others. Yeah, for example, the Rwandan, uh, the Rwandan genocide where uh, two groups were massacring one another, that was pretty much the apex of white privilege. Therefore, I assume the term only to represent the height of privilege. But by all means, if you recognize any of these types of behaviors in yourself, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, class, etc., feel free to identify with them and ask yourself, why do I act like such an asshole? Now for the juicy stuff. It's a shame that the same type of people who exhibit these behaviors may never feel inclined to read an article like this or own up to it. But this first story of dick bag behavior goes to one of my classmates. Yes, one particular person inspired this open letter. Wow, so there's this one white guy who really pissed you off because he's an obnoxious fellow. And therefore we extend it to you know, several hundred million people who have a skin that has a U of whiteness. That makes sense. Definitely not racist. I hope you read this letter and know that I tell my friends about this in class. I tell my family, hell, I'm even telling strangers now. This is exemplary of the type of backwards bullshit comments that I have to put up with regularly. I'm a victim. I'm a victim. And I tell them about you. Yes, you. I really hope you pick this up and read this and know that when I look for the pinnacle of white privilege, poli sci, bro, I tell them about you. You might be wondering what could possibly be so upsetting to inspire such a lengthy diatribe. One day in conference, the class was pitching our research paper topics. I wanted to examine the impacts of gender quotas on female representation in Parliament. Near the end of the conference, my topic had sparked an especially heated debate between this bro and I about the validity of such an approach to fix the gender gap. I'm seething while writing this, just so you know. I remember feeling frustrated because I worked in the House of Commons for a year, so I knew what it was like to be a woman there. I saw women bring their sleeping babies into the house in a system with a so-called feminist prime minister that has not ensured enough resources for young moms in the house. I saw the way women staffers were treated and sexualized, the pervasive toxic masculinity, the aggression of certain men, and it was frightening. I told you that I would support a gender quota wholeheartedly, if only so I could look into my own parliament one day and see a face that looked like mine. So for example, for me, I could never be the full evolutionary behavioral scientist that I could become unless I see other Lebanese Jews stunningly gorgeous, slightly differently weighted. Otherwise, how could I truly study natural and sexual selection and how that leads to the evolution of the human mind? I need to see someone who looks like me to truly understand the distribution of prime numbers. Otherwise, it's just white patriarchy. 
Uh, let me see. I lost my space. Uh, okay. You were dismissive, to say the least. I can understand how this means almost nothing to you, because unlike you, and whenever she writes you, it's uh, ital italicized, I can try and relate to people of a different gender. If I were a white boy like you, I too might be unconcerned because men are heartily represented and you have no reason to feel like you have to fight for anything. Your voice is always heard. Sometimes it's the only one that's heard and you are always safe. Yes, because most victims of murders are not men. But my voice is almost never heard and you could never muster enough empathy for a fraction of a second to consider why I might be invested in this case. You said, and I quote, women are just less interested in politics. I spluttered for a second, looked at my conference where women were the majority and wanted to cry. I argued this wasn't true. And even if that vast and entirely unfounded overgeneralization did have any inkling of truth, it may have something to do with the systemic barriers women have faced for centuries. You replied, quote, I don't get upset that there are more women in art history than there are men. That's just the way things work, close quote. At this point, my replies were a little sharper, and I could feel my emotions getting the better of me. Can you imagine what this must have felt like for me? Actually, no, you can't. To hear that the underrepresentation of women in politics was somehow a natural reflection of interest, <coughs> James Damore was so absolutely ignorant of all the struggles women face in this particular field. So, yeah. It got personal. And when I started to cut you off and interjecting because your arguments were premised on inaccuracies, you replied in the most patronizing way. You asked me if I could just stop cutting you off and let you finish your argument. I wanted to yell. I wanted to scream and flip a table and throw myself on the ground and rip myself in half. I wonder if I know of any class of individuals who throw temper tantrums wait a second i do they're called toddlers i didn't want to hear what you had to say anymore i felt bad for your own body your own muscles and vocal cords were plagued with the task of speaking your amazingly ignorant words i was emotional because my hopes and ambitions were up for debate no, he disagreed with your viewpoint. I understand that disagreement with you is a form of disagreement rape, but people in a free society have a right to disagree with you even though you're a woman of color. I'm a man of color, a Arabic Jew, differently weighted, who escaped execution, and I receive tons of hate every single day from people who disagree with me. They're allowed to disagree with me. Because that's what debates are. It's not disagreement rape. It's called disagreements. Did my voice really need to be heard? Do women really need to be treated as equals? The answer is a stupid and painfully indisputable yes. And here I was talking to some dude who pulls up in a Patagonia sweater and acts like these and my own existence were up for debate. This was not the only time the gender quota issue would spark some debate, and it manifested itself in strange ways. A long friend of mine, a white guy. <gasps> See, I can be friends with white guys. This isn't misandry. Okay, got it. So you, you've spoken to a white guy, so you don't hate all white guys. Said that while in... While women in parliament should be represented more, he didn't like the idea that a gender quota might force us to overlook the most qualified candidate. I don't understand how he and so many other people have this impression that the most qualified politician would always be an old white dude. 
Not to mention the job of an MP is one that actually has spectacularly few requirements and therefore what really constitutes a quote qualified candidate. Some would have argued that Tony Clement, former Harper cabinet member, minister, was a quote qualified candidate up until he sent dick pics to people and caused a nationwide scandal. Farmers can be qualified and lawyers can be qualified and my favorite example, Miss Ruth Ellen Brosseau, can be qualified. She has now successfully been elected twice, and she got pregnant at 16, dropped out of school, finished via distance learning, and didn't campaign in a traditional sense. She, she was originally elected in the Orange Wave in Quebec and proved herself a qualified candidate again in the 2015 election. The job of MP has few requirements and perhaps even few clear job descriptions. So how can you even evaluate what it means to be qualified when there are so few qualifications in place? The gender quota woman in politics discussion is just the tip of the iceberg. Those white guys who trample all over women's rights are just as eager to do it to minorities and indigenous people. In class about a week ago, the most vocal critic of Canada's treatment of indigenous nations was some white guy. It's one thing to support indigenous nations, but to speak on their behalf and to pretend to feel some righteous indignation seems wrong. So you get this? A white guy is speaking in defense of indigenous people, and that just feels wrong. You just don't get the right to talk about others' pain and suffering and raise your voice and feel justified in your anger when it isn't yours. There's only one way for you to demonstrate that you care. Just kill yourself, white people, especially white men. Why can't you just do it for world peace? If somebody stood up and spoke about Afro-Latinas and claimed to understand my pain, my confused identity, my personal struggle with my homeland and culture, and the biases I face, I would be offended, especially if they were to do it as if they have the right to feel those things on my behalf. Now, obviously, this highlights the greater issue that indigenous people are also severely underrepresented in McGill at large and in its political science program, but instead of passively deferring to other people to speak on their behalf when these topics do come up in class, guest lecturers or indigenous writers should be at the forefront, not you, white guy. So for example, if you're studying the Holocaust, don't study the Holocaust, don't comment about the Holocaust, don't lecture about the Holocaust, unless you're a Jew, because otherwise you don't know what it feels like to be burned in those Nazi ovens. Shut your mouths if you're not Jewish. Do not speak about the Holocaust. This is a person studying at one of the leading universities in the world, and she thinks she's on the right side of the issue. In political science, I feel like I have to constantly defend my right to be represented, which may prompt some of you to ask why I didn't choose something a little less emotionally exhausting. It's because I saw what politics was like for a woman of color, and I wanted to ensure that no one else who looked like me or had experienced what I had experienced would question their right to engage in political dialogue and be heard. Remember my testimony in the Canadian Senate. It's not, I think, therefore I am. I'm a victim, therefore I am. The horrors that this person must have felt walking through one of the leading institutions in the political science department is unimaginable. Not even me, whose parents were kidnapped by Fatah, who, who escaped Lebanon under imminent threat of execution, could understand the horrors that this woman must have gone through in Montreal in the 21st century at one of the leading institutions. How could I understand what she went through when the U.S. government just came out with data a few years ago showing that across five racial groups and four levels of educational attainment, meaning 20 different cells, women outnumber men in every single one of the 20 cells, 
the horrors that women are going through today is unimaginable at universities. It's unfathomable that they could muster the courage to even walk on campus. Bravo. Another white poli sci bro. No, hold on. I think I missed something. It's because I saw... Oh, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. Another white poli sci bro asked me why representation was so important anyway. He said, quote, I don't need to see a white person doing my job to know what I can do, it, that I can do it too. And I think this is pretty... A close quote. And I think this is pretty much a remarkable level of privilege. This is something that you are born with. And as you slip out into the world... Society will continue to reinforce it. It's something so deeply held and something so deluding that I'm actually amazed people like you that can walk through the world so unaware even today. I agree with you, sister. That guy should just throw himself off a cliff for peace. You seem genuinely upset when you said this, like you thought I was stupid for needing to see myself represented in politics. So here is why representation is so important. Every time I see a female professor, lawyer, politician, or any other profession, I think to myself, <laughs> it's safe. These waters have been tested. I'm not diving into a pool of sharks. Or if I am, at least I know I'm not doing it alone. You know, the place where women now outnumber men, unbelievably so, across nearly every single program, every single racial group, every single level of attainment, associate's degree, bachelor's degree, master's degree, and doctorate. She is finally seeing other women. She knows it's safe to walk into the university. These waters have been tested. Oh, I read that already. Or if I am, at least I know that I'm not doing it alone and that other women have survived and even thrived, so I can too. I need a testament to the fact that pursuing something will not exhaust me emotionally or crush my spirit or defeat me because even though it may be difficult and I will be the minority, I will, not, I will know I'm not alone. But can you imagine how hard it was for the first woman, women in graduate seminars, surrounded by white men? I can't imagine. The idea of being surrounded by a bunch of white men must be grotesque. Can you imagine how fucking hard it must have been to know that there is no path? You are the first one to walk and you must make the way easier for others who will follow? If I can only muster as much strength as she did. I will come out of this okay. And maybe, sorry, I'm tearing up. And maybe even stronger. Lastly, before I collapse into yet another heap of helpless tears about how stupidly awful poli sci can be, let me just say to the guy in the conservation association, conservative association on campus who wore a quote make canada great again close quote hat courtesy of rebel media fuck you see she can be eloquent when she needs to be it was activities night and you made me fucking scared for what poli sci here might be like because i thought it might be filled with the likes of you you know people who hold a different political position. Can you imagine as a poli sci student if I am faced with people who don't share my political views? I believe that the MAGA hat in all its incarnations is an act of violence. Wearing a MAGA hat, this is why those Covington kids are neo-Nazis who probably are hat rapists. They wear those hats. They're committing violence. And if you're reading it, if anyone knows this guy, please direct him to this letter. Just know what you wear is not about free speech in some 
asshole Jordan Peterson way. Love you, Jordan. It is dehumanizing and offensive. And you disgust me. This is not satire, by the way. This is not me who wrote this letter, just for you to know, because I know oftentimes people write to me and say, hey, Dr. Saad, is, is it you? Are you reading a real letter or not a real letter? This I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the link to this article published in the McGill Daily, one of the leading universities in the world. I don't know if this letter has accomplished anything besides allowing me to say what I've been thinking for so long and ease my own pain. I mean, imagine how tortured this woman is. I mean, all those women in the Middle East who are hidden behind burqas so that they don't have personhoods, that have female genital mutilations done on them when they're young children, that can't go out without having a male chaperone with them, who are told who to marry. They've got nothing on this woman when it comes to her victimhood. Imagine this woman when she's walking at one of the leading universities in the world and she's exposed to people who have different political positions than her. Forget about cutting off of the clitoris. This person is a victim. Like I said, I doubt any of you bros will pick up this letter and read it and actually change or call out your buddies and ask them to change. I bet some of you will even boycott the daily if you don't already, as if throwing away this paper will stop the daily from calling out men on toxic masculinity. But I would be oh so grateful if just this once you proved me wrong about your behavior and looked inside yourself and did some good with your immense privilege. Sincerely, your equal. This person feels sufficiently compelled she sufficiently thinks that she's on the right side of the issue, that she can write this letter, exhibit astonishing hatred to a mass of people. Again, just replace the word white boy by black woman, uh, Muslim men, and see if that's okay. But it's white men that she is hating on, and therefore that's perfectly permissible in our current zeitgeist it's astonishing by the way she doesn't feel sufficiently convinced in her positions to sign her name so it's anonymous because probably she is so afraid of the fact that canada is maga country just like chicago is maga country am i right noble victim jesse smollett so this woman is so afraid that she has to sign it under anonymous, but I'm not so afraid to critique her under my own name. I exist in this ecosystem called academia, and I stand by every position that I take and every principle that I hold. Every human being has a right to live with full dignity, free of bigotry. Constructing full narratives of victimhood is urinating on true tales of victimhood. A woman who currently exists in one of the leading universities in the world, studying in one of the most progressive cities in the world, where probably everywhere she turns, women are outnumbering men, is not a manifestation of a victim. Go to Raqqa, Syria, and see how women live. If you care about victimhood, speak out against true victims. And this is not whataboutism. If you care about women of color who are truly oppressed, then join me and others, many tr women of color who do stand up to intolerance. Your enemy is not the white political science student who may or may not be obnoxious. There are many bigger enemies, but you're too cowardly to face them because you're too intoxicated in your narcissistic need for Munchausen 
syndrome, sympathy, and empathy. Have a good weekend, everybody.